unsettled dreams. That night, your sleep is peppered with uncomfortable dreams. The sky of your dream is blazing gold. It's peppered, uh, no, crowded, with suns. Suns piled on suns like the groats in a miser's hoard. Their light floods you. It shines through skin and blood and meat, picking out your branching veins and the slender pillars of your bones. Is there no more to you than this? You wake. It's unwise, but I'm going to seek company. Conversation and tea and perhaps a biscuit. Those fundamental human things that help us forget. Numinous moments like this. Engine has to be mostly crewed by the living. And 12% chance of success. I'm not very good at it, but you know what? Elizabeth goes to the incognito princess. You find other crew in the galley and tell them of your dreams. They're unsettled. They had the same dream too. So yeah, rather than the incognito princess consoling Elizabeth, they're just like, oh my god, you had that dream too? How horrible. How strange. And now you both are scared. <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm moving slower? Is it just because there's like not much of a reference point next to me? Yeah, that was it. The reference point of that is just so hard to see. It doesn't feel fast. I guess it moves slower because it's so far away. So far down there. The land of frosts and cantankeries and hours. Oh, even if you pass close to them, if you go by them pretty fast, they don't aggro. They don't care. Grumpy little fellas. The Monterey. Oh, are these the... Wait, is that the... Is that the candlelight? The ca or can or the candle wind? The one that I saw over at Old Tom's Well? That's not Old Tom's Well. There. I remember it was here. Maybe the... Candle wind is also random, just like the peacock wind, because that definitely looks like it. It's little bits of light. Oh, yeah. Pulling me in. Stripper for repairs. Yeah, let's always do that. If I'm not full on hole. Full on hole. Now I am. Captain's cabin, salon stewed gossip. All right, are you leading to anything, the candle wind? Hmm, I just realized I'm gonna, when I wanna go back through this, I'm gonna have to go against the candle wind. That's not great, but whatever. I wanna explore. I'm gonna use my back thrusters to slow us down a bit. Getting like little aggro signals. Is that cantankery like on the side here? Old ruins are locked in the uh, are locked in the ice. Their staircase is leading nowhere. I had a friend climbed one of them stairs, an engineer claims. Didn't come down again though. Spinster's pen. Oh, wait, I've already given them the pen. The phlegmatic researcher, can they, will they take a research item multiple times? Uh, I don't remember what the reward for that was. Uh, I guess I'll do it.
Is turning that in worth more than bronze would? Will it advance the research to research the same thing multiple times? Okay, so we're close enough to the horror to feel it. The red glow of correspondence. Signal the wreck. Success. A food stash gained two supplies. Nice. Someone there. You dispatch a boarding party. They retrieve a survivor who's too weak to work, but will share their hoarded supplies with you. So many scones. Hey, this thing below us is moving. It's rotating. That's the first time I've seen one of these things rotating. That's eerie. Why is it rotating? What's making it move? Oh, don't go forwards. I don't want to get caught in their vortex. Discontent. Another star winking out of existence. Uh, more brandy. Make everybody happy. Yes. Oh, I just learned something interesting there. So even if you kill them, their vortex will still fire off. Bronzewood. Success. You know, since I've already gained the horror for being in this place, let's go look at the sigils of the correspondence again, shall we? And there's probably some more scribes to fight. Those symbols are so damn menacing. No, too close, too close. leveled up. Nice. Another success. More bronze wood. Well, before I decide on what I want to spend my level up on, I feel like I should always do that at port, you know? Feels like an appropriate place to level up, not just while you're near a horror out in the skies. <laughs> Let's go back to Lustrum real quick and resupply. So we have discontent. A junior signaler receives a dose of medicinal port in the infirmary after seeing a frozen corpse spin past a window. The experience has shaken him. The dead are hungry, he says. We need to make an offering or it'll come back and knock it at the hole. I think what I want to do, just because it's kind of interesting, is let's get nightmares. Lower terror by 50, but increase your nightmares. I haven't had nightmares for a while. Let's do it. Recover the body and transport it for burial. 
You'll be poor company, but it is what you'd want to happen if you were found dead in the sky. A dour companion. It's a good deed, perhaps, to carry a lost soul home, but it's not a happy one. The crew are grimly hardened, but your dreams are troubled. The corpse wore a captain's jacket. Their face is a mask of frozen horror. Oh, there's a bunch of cantankery hanging out over there. So, for my level up, I'm gonna do Haunted. You are plagued by the past, by some guilt or sin or old ordeal that will not let you rest. What is the nature of the haunting? Okay, so I just wrote this for Elizabeth's backstory. During my years on the frontier of the skies, You're messing up my roleplay, girl. I need to read this character backstory. I need to read it. During my years on the frontier of the skies, I bounced from ship to port to ship, seeing as much as I could. It wasn't a lifestyle that left many opportunities to make friends. But there was one person, the clumsy conductor. She was a good friend, even if she did spill my tea half a dozen times. We got to know each other on one of my longer stints working on a ship, and try to get jobs in the same ships when we could. During my more indulgent years, we drifted. The last I saw of her, she asked me to join her on board the Bordelius, and I was too busy wasting my stolen hours. A month later, I read in the paper that the wreckage of the Bordelius was found by a windward dreadnought. So Elizabeth is thinking of the clumsy conductor and how things could have been different if they said yes. A chill on the window, a breeze when the window is closed, a pressure on the edge of the bed as if someone was sat there as you slept. You are not alone. We're getting our hearts back though. Getting our resolve back. So I'm heading over to Port Prosper, and this cantankery really does not want to leave me alone. I have to kill it. I, I can't outrun it. It just tries to launch at me. Uh, for research, we can retrieve the stomach. So, yeah. Heading down to Port Prosper. Hello, are you waiting for me? Chip. Ah. Oh, it took quite a bit of damage there. Really gotta watch that heat. Oh, this is the signal box. There we go. Strip the engine for materials. Nice. Twelfth hole. Oh, so now we are to unexplored territory. Yeah. Let's check this area out right before we get to Port Prosper. That reminds me, I should read this. Um, yeah. It looks like the first little blurb here is unique to each separate signal box. Window cracks have accreted a filling of moss green dust. Once white paint is yellowed and peeling. Signal box possesses a faded dignity like a beleaguered butler. It was designed with pride to be part of that great folly, the Isambard line. Actually, that one isn't unique. I guess just that one was. The destiny. Hope that's not my destiny. Uh, what do I need the most? Keeping in mind that I'm actually extremely low on money, so I probably can't buy anything until I get back to New Winchester. But I have a good amount of, of everything, really. Let's gather 
munitions. That's fine. I know I needed a couple items to try to help them repair the clock at Port Prosper. I think one of them was bronze wood, which I have. But there was something else, and I don't think I have that. It was probably Chorister Nectar. Or maybe... Oh, maybe it was a pane of glass. I don't remember. But whatever it is, I don't have it. Haven't heard this music in a while. So cool. we're back here so yeah at this point the only things left to explore is this and then this big patch regent's grave's gotta be somewhere in there i'm not gonna cut this out because i haven't been to port prosper in forever I should also see the relay to Albion while I'm here, see what I might need to get a permit. Let's get a port report. Uh, oh, Verdant Encouragement, right. Right, one of the exports from the Nature Reserve. Drop them off with the clerks at the loading bay, they'll see it gets to its destination. Please give me lots of money. 150. Eh. I only have 242 sovereigns. That's so low. Yes, yes, quite good. The clerk with the polished button says as you finish signing. Now let's see that dreadful stuff out of our bay, yes? I guess I'm not going to buy any deals, right? No, I mean, I barely have any money. Ah, right, they want... Undistinguished souls at Port Prosper. 450 profit for that. For delivering three. Anyway, back to the main place. Offer transport to settlers. Yeah, anybody want to join? Encourage people. Takes a sky story. They listen to the tales. Transport a settler. Where do you want to go? One way to Lustrum, thanking you kindly. By Jove, I think it's finally my time to see the, to see the real frontier. His handshake is firm to the point of rudeness. He leans in close. My time is precious, you understand. I'd appreciate it if you got me there as quick as you can. You shan't go unrewarded for the effort. Hmm, right. You get more money if you deliver them quickly, but the thing is, even if you deliver them quickly, they don't give you that much. I don't remember how much it was, but I remember not being impressed. So I'm not going to make that a priority. Oh, there's so much to do. Let's check out the clock tower. What do they need? Yes, Chorister Nectar and Bronzewood. A messenger greets you at the station? What is this? Unlocked when you do not have the long passage. He has the scrubbed pink face and immaculate hair of a natural-born butler. He holds a placard with your name. An intriguing message. The messenger explains that he is, as you already guessed, a butler. His master has heard much about your exploits and is quite desperate to meet you. He hands you a card with an address. You recognize it as a neighborhood of particular wealth and prominence. You can now visit the Bleak Industrialist's estate. Cryptic Benefactor plus one. How did I get this? Did I get this from having the first cryptic benefactor that I think I got when I joined the club at Port Avon? The hunting club thing? But if so, why would it give me another... Another one. Another cryptic benefactor. 
Join the Lamas Fair. Celebration of the Bounty and Fortune of Port Prosper. There is an elderly... There is an elderly lady whispers surreptitiously, likely to be a Tambala. I'm not sure if I've read this before. I don't think so. All the sights and sounds of a day at the fair in London. Genuine rubbery lumps sold by the cartful. Icons of mayors passed from Dick Whittington to Shining Jenny line the streets. A Ferris wheel offers paying customers the chance to survey the heights of Port Prosper. Side stalls speckle the side streets manned by gamblers and mountebanks. The main streets offer popular games and diversions watched over by a number of burly guards from the factories. Hold on, I need to look that up. Mountebanks. Mountebanks. A mountebank, a person who deceives others, especially in order to trick them out of their money. A charlatan, a swindler, trickster, fraudster. Okay, I see. Oh, right, I wanted to get more in with the East... No. No, no, not the Eastenders. The Eastenders are the rich ones, right? Which ones? There's like a rich group and... Oh. Well, I know what I'm doing. Beware the inadvisably big dog. Something large and immodestly fluffy this way comes. People hasten to get out of the way. Perhaps you should stop it. <laughs> I've seen this picture of this dog on Twitter. I don't know what this event actually is. I've just seen the picture of the dog. Oh, I'm definitely doing that. There's only a 26% chance of success, though. And success! Oh, I'll take that as a sign from God. Friends, a dog of colossal proportions, golden as a lick of pale nectar, comes stampeding through the stalls, crashing into displays, tripping bystanders. Menace in a body of a long-tailed, velvet-nosed stuffed toy. <laughs> you move it in the canine's trajectory, arms spread wide. The dog, dog, uh, the dog takes it as an invitation to pounce, bowling you over and subsequently half-drowning you in slobber. The locals are only too happy for you to lead the animal away, especially after they discover that no one knows who he belongs to, where he came from, and why they've tolerated him for so long. Your inadvisably big dog quality is now one. Good. Are they coming with me? I hope they're coming with me. Nobody knows whose they are, so they can just come with me, right? Run with a crew of East Enders. You are embraced by the impoverished East Enders. Oh yeah, so the East Enders are the impoverished ones. Good. Let's get to know them better. Distracted tourists flush with unlovable items won from various stalls. Young ladies and gents careless with their wedding bands. Barkers so intent on promising wonders of the reach far from the security of Port Prosper, they've forgotten to secure their own pockets. You and your friends examine your hall at the end of a brisk promenade down the bridge. Precious little coinage, but a number of highly alarming prizes won. There's no accounting for taste, apparently. The parsimonious chairman is out on his morning constitutional. East Enders steer clear of his route. West Enders track him down to make entreaties. Three uncanny specimens. Why does it say that the parsimonious chairman's out on his morning constitutional? Is that a hint that, like, an opportunity is opened up? I think we've already seen this. Yeah, we've seen that. Uh, I'll be turned away at the Windward Company, right? Or at least I can't do anything. I don't want to do anything with them. Have I already asked about the Albion Transit Relay? I must have. Is there anything here about what they'll want? No. I've got to go to the actual relay, I think, to get a permit, probably. If I even need a permit. Maybe I already have one from all the ministry stamp permits I have. Maybe that's fine for Albion, just not Eleutheria. Obviously, I want to go to the Bleak Industrialist's estate. Uh, check out the Parsimonious Chairman's offices. No, so they're not... They're not gone, despite the fact that I said they're out on their morning walk or whatever. So it's not like there's an opportunity to go loot their place. Okay, I think the only thing left to do is visit the Bleak Industrialist's estate. 
the estate takes up half a street. The mansion itself is a grandiose structure with Venetian windows, a cupola, columns in the Palladian, yeah, pl Palladium, Palladium, Palladium style, but the garden is tangled with weeds. Muddy water pools glumly at the bottom of disused fountains. The industrialist receives you in one of his drawing rooms, sitting with a rum glass beside a fire. He has a sour cast to his mouth and eyes that blaze with indiscriminate loathing. <laughs> Ask why he sent for you. Before he answers, he knocks back the rum in a single gulp and calls for his butler to fetch another. A proposal. There is a distant kingdom where the dead can be found. The industrialist's voice is hoarse with disuse. I need an enterprising sort, such as yourself, to visit it for me and retrieve someone. It should be a simple enough affair. In return, I will pay you a small fortune. Who does he want brought back from the dead? Some years ago, I lost someone dear to me, he says. A world without her, without her in it is worthless, miserable. I need her back. So if someone dies, can you just go get them from the Blue Kingdom? Is that how it works? When you die, you don't completely disappear. You go to the Blue Kingdom? It seems too easy. That seems too easy. Like, it can't be that simple. That'd mean that basically everybody doesn't really die. But surely people are afraid of dying. Can't be just like you go to the Blue Kingdom and everything's great. Something's gotta be wrong. Okay, and that's also making me think. Maybe that's why Whitlock went there and brought somebody back in that box, and that's why they said it was worth it. Did they bring somebody that they knew back from the dead? Somebody who died that was important to them? Sacrificed their life for... for them? Hmm. 26% 26 26 chance of trying to extract a higher reward. <laughs> Why only a small fortune? I mean, they are rich. Fuck them, right? But also, there's a pretty bad chance of doing that. Try to persuade the industrialist to let go. Hmm. Uh. I'm fascinated. Uh, I'll agree to help you. You can at least try to retrieve his lost love from the kingdom of the dead. Thank you. The industrialist contemplates his glass for a while. London has an embassy there, a place called Sky Barnet. I cultivated a contact among the diplomats who I hoped would help me, but he's proved useless. Maybe you'll get more value from him than I could. There's no further conversation. The industrialist sits back in his high-backed chair and stares at the fire with empty hatred. Let's go check out the Albion Relay real quick. It should just be right back here. A stone edifice scintillating with sigils. Oh, wait, this is the same description as the other relays, right? Yes. This one leads to Albion, the heart of the new British Empire and the seat of her renewed majesty's of her renewed majesty Queen Victoria. Check on the delayed package. Oh, that's the previously impounded goods thing from nature, the nature reserve. They wanted me to check out the relay. It turns out that the previous courier was detained for having the wrong paperwork. Fortunately, the goods were impounded on this side of the relay. sign here. The board customs official is glad to clear some space in their cramped office. As long as you don't want to travel between regions without the appropriate paperwork, they couldn't care much less about cargo. This package has been serving double duty as a card table for the last week. But now it's yours and the people of LNS, LNS's nature reserve will be glad to receive it. Submit the paperwork required for a travel permit. So what do I need? Two ministry stamped permits. Okay. Yeah, so I don't actually need to spend any money, right? Oh, right, and you can also come second class 
for cheaper. Uh, you'll need to supply your own hours. The relay station will spin them into a coat to wrap your engine against the winds that harry the wild paths you must travel. What? Spin them into a coat? Fascinating. Okay, submit the paperwork required for a travel permit. At a bronzewood kiosk, the superintendent examines your papers minutely, sticks them on a spike, then signs and stamps a small booklet for you. Your new transit permit. Union Jack Blue, he says of its cover, as if it were something to be proud of. Now I can travel. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and head back to New Winchester, drop off stuff. I, I, I'm so low on money that I really need to sell some things, like Bronzewood, just at the general store, not for a prospect. Back in New Winchester now. Let's repair our locomotive. We're good on crew. I got a little bit of money from turning in the port reports, but I think I have like 500 coin. Just short of 500. There's a couple new prospects though. Hours for the nature reserve. Seeds for Port Avon. Pretty easy ones that I think I already have the stuff for. Oh, I don't have room for that other prospect, do I? Well, I'm having trouble getting the literature. Um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna drop this one. So, next episode... Yes, spoiler, I'm gonna end the episode soon. <laughs> next episode we can do a bunch of prospects and get some of our money back, which is a relief. In the meantime, though, I think I wanna sell just... I have so much bronze wood, let's just sell a couple. So I have a bit more money. I'm, I'm really uncomfortably low. Uh, Victoria Market. Yeah, 700 over a thousand. There, I feel better. There's a couple things we can do in the city, actually. We can deliver the cinders. There's a sound of commotion. And we need to return to Madame Lumiere. But I'm going to save that for next episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to do all those things. And then I think I'm finally going to deliver the materials to fix the clock at Port Prosper. 